Welcome into sportsbookreview.com. My name is Christopher Giannini. This is the week four opening line show for college football. We have three weeks, technically four if you count week zero, in the book so far. We're going to recap uh, what happened a little bit last week. Moving on, get into some of the opening lines, talk about some of the big games coming up, and, and see what we think of the lines. But first thing you need to know is the show is put on by sportsreview.com. And you can go there. You can find all the information that you need for all of your gambling needs. All right? They've got odds. They've got they've got articles up about all these games that we're going to have going into this week, whether you like college football, pro football, uh, baseball is coming into play. Uh, whatever you want and whatever you need, you go to sportsbookreview.com. That's where you'll find everything you need. They'll take care of you. Also, if you're watching the video, hit the like button, man. Give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. It helps the algorithm. And, and as we go through this, there's going to be a lot of games out there that I don't hit on. So put games in the comments that you would like me to hit on. I'm going to read the comments after this video. I'm going to read the comments after the Wednesday Night Key Show video, the big game preview video. And then... Any games I missed, any games I didn't hit on or didn't go deep enough, I will get to on our Saturday live show. It is the best 30 minutes of the week that you are going to spend right here with me Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern time, right before we kick off Saturday, uh, college football. Let's get into the recap. Every week, first thing we do, we give a uh, winners, we give losers, we give a single game Heismans, and then we talk about the bad beat of the week. First off, biggest winners of the weekend. I got three of them here for you. Number one, BYU. They are 3-0 and against the Pac-12. 3-0 and to start the season. Two out of those three games are ranked opponents. Jaron Hall looks fantastic. He is protecting the football. Has not turned the ball over since week one. Played two pretty good defenses, and he has looked outstanding. That team is running on everybody. They are controlling the line of scrimmage. They are doing exactly what you're supposed to do. And let me tell you something, BYU's schedule looks better and better every week. There's a world where we can be looking back and see BYU could go undefeated. They could run the table. We came into this season, and I had people telling me this BYU team was going to go 6-6. Six and six. They were going to struggle to make a bowl game. They lost Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson threw like nine interceptions today. What are we talking about, okay? Jaron is the man, and this team is cooking. I love watching this team. Provo is rocking. It is an outstanding place to watch a football game. They're one of the big winners of the weekend. Next up, next big winner, Michigan State Spartans. Holy crap. They play outstanding defense. They run the football better than anybody else that I know right now, and they just don't turn the ball over. They don't make mistakes. These guys went on the road to Miami, and they got a big-time win for that program. I don't think Miami is a good football team, but nobody on the planet thought Michigan State was a good football team when the season started. Okay, nobody. The fact that they are rolling the way they're rolling. Look, I could see them. Now, they got a couple of tough tests coming up, but I could see them making it to week. I think it's week six playing Indiana. They could be undefeated going in that game. If they beat Indiana, they could be undefeated going into their heads up matchup with Michigan. And that, my friends, is something nobody in the world believed. I don't know that even the people that wear the green and white out at, in Michigan State believed it. Mel Tucker, right now, as we are going into week four, is the runaway favorite. I'm talking just smoking everybody for coach of the year as of right now as we stand. And then my last winner, eh, let's just give it to the entire damn Mountain West. Okay. We got four teams, three teams. I'm going to give you three. I'm going to give you three big Mountain West teams that all won in an upset straight up Saturday night. Utah State over Air Force. I think they were like a nine and a half uh, dog at one point in time. Might have closed at eight and a half. Did not matter. Won the game straight up. San Diego State. Your boy gave you San Diego State straight up. Utah losing two in a row. San Diego State over Utah. And then Fresno State. Holy cow. Did not see this game coming at all. Thought UCLA had a bye week. Thought they were going to get things back to rolling. Dominating LA. Putting on a show. 
Fresno State, really good football team. Guys, do not sleep on the Mountain West. I know every year we just assume it's BYU or bust. It is not this year. It's an exciting conference. The way I have talked about the American in the past, about how deep it is and how exciting it is, how fun it is, how good these teams are, the Mountain West is that conference this year. They're really good. Keep an eye on them. Love that Mountain West. The biggest losers, I got one big loser, guys. I got one. They're the biggest losers of them all. It's not close. And it is the men that run around in silly-ass striped shirts that throw little hankies around. The referees in college football this weekend were absolute trash. They were trash in the Penn State-Auburn game. And I'm not talking about if you're Penn State, Auburn got a bunch of calls, and if you're Auburn – that game was bad both ways. Both teams got completely screwed multiple times. I don't think anybody had an advantage. I don't think anybody was trying to throw or fix a game. I think these people are incompetent. I think they are useless and they are causing problems. Bring on the robo radio uh, referees. Bring on, uh, bring on technology. Get these people off of my football field. They are just absolute trash. Another game they were real bad in is the Memphis... <laughs> Mississippi State game, holy cow, how on earth can you make the blundering calls that they made? I do not understand. I just don't. It does, my, my brain is not capable. Now, I've never claimed to be a genius, guys, but I am not capable of comprehending the level of ignorance and stupidity that some of these people possess when they go out there on TV. And I know their job is hard, and I know it's high-stressed, but I think they're pretty well compensated for that stressful job, okay? And I would like them to be better at that. Then the last game, this doesn't surprise me at all. This, th this is exactly what I expected it to be. It's the Alabama-Florida game. If you're a Bama fan... Plug your ears right now. You don't want to hear it. Nobody cares. Everybody else in the SEC knows this is just the business. Not only does Bama have all the best players, not only do they have all the best coaches, but they're also going to get every damn call whenever they need. And I'm not talking about, oh, there are ticky-tack calls that go both ways. I'm talking about in big-time third-down situations where Alabama would be punting, they get every call they need no matter how ticky tack or if it was phantom or not they're just gonna always get it get rid of the referees i'm done with the stripes you wear a silly ridiculous shirt and you throw a yellow hanky out for a living how pathetic are you get off my field single game heisman let's talk about some positivity for a minute guys i brought up michigan state earlier giving a single game heisman to kenneth walker the third for michigan state running back 27 touches, 172 yards. Oh, yeah, by the way, three three catches for 17 yards and a touchdown. The guy ran all over Miami. This is a great story. He was at Wake Forest. He didn't like – he was like third string, didn't play a whole lot. They run a weird spread, you know, catching the football out of the backfield. He wanted to run a pro-style system. He knows he's a hard-nosed running back that drives people into the ground. He puts one foot in front of the other with purpose, and he runs folks over. He finds holes, and he plows through them, and he, he went to Michigan State. He's played in a pro-style offense. This is exactly where he feels comfortable at, and he looked fantastic. Next guy, giving it to another running back. This is my guy, pulled Oklahoma State out, rabbit out of the hat, won the ball straight up, told you they were going to do it. Oklahoma State went to Boise. Jalen Warren, 32 touches, 218 yards on 32 touches for two touchdowns. Unbelievable performance. He gets a single-game Heisman. And, guys, the front runner for the Heisman. You talked about Mel Tucker being the, the coach of the year. For, the front runner for the Heisman, I told you before the season started, I picked three Heisman candidates, Okay. One of them was Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel's got a broken clavicle, probably going to be out for the season. If he comes back, he's definitely lost his highs with enough abilities. The next one up, it was uh, Desmond Howard. Uh, holy crap, Desmond Howard. That is a guy that talks on TV. Desmond Ritter for, for Cincinnati, quarterback. Had a rough go in the first half, figured things out, so I guess his Heisman campaign is not over, but he's got a hell of a lot of catching up to do. The gentleman that we're going to talk about tonight is one Matthew Corral from my Ole Miss Rebels. Let me tell you about Matt Corral. Matt Corral was 23 of 31 for 335 yards and three touchdowns. Oh, that wasn't good enough? You know, you know that's good? We need more? 
We're going to give him more. We're going to give him more. He also he also ran the ball 13 times, 68 yards, and four more touchdowns. He accounted for seven touchdowns by himself Saturday night against the Tulane Green Wave. This man is the front runner. They get the week off this week. Two weeks from now, they're going to Tuscaloosa, and he is going to have an opportunity to punch his ticket to New York when they bring down the mighty Crimson Tide. My bad beat of the week cost me some do re me. Guys, this was as free money as free money gets. Somebody hit up my DMs and asked me throughout the week, which y'all can do as well, any games I miss, and you want me to talk about, what do you think of Army UConn? And I said, dude, I put zero thought into that game, and that's my fault. That's my mistake because I think Army's a really good football team, and I think Utah is the worst team I may have ever seen. And so – Let's let's play Army. Let's play Army big. And I told you to play Army Saturday morning in our live show. Army laying 31 and a half. Army is beating these fools like they've stole something from their mama. And I'll be damned if two minutes was a time on the clock. I didn't write it down. Two minutes left in the clock. Maybe like 218, 228, something like that. And UConn gets it. Garbage trash ass touchdown to make this final score 52 to 31, 21, sorry. And it's a 31 point total, 31 point game. I need them to win by 31 and a half. That, my friends, is how you get a bad beat. That is just, I mean, that's about as backdoor as it gets. You dominate the hell out of a team. You take their soul and you just rip it straight from their lungs. And garbage time touchdowns, pop it. This is why it's hard, hard, hard to hit these big, big numbers, guys. Hard. Let's get in to the opening lines this week, guys. I got eight games I want to talk about. We're not going to go deep into them. We're just going to give you the line. I'm going to tell you some things I think about the game, give you a little bit of my opinion on it, and and, and we're just going to kind of breeze through this. Okay, this is just a light stroll through the park. Biggest game of the weekend. I don't know if game day is going here or not, but I think game day should be going there if they're not. Notre Dame's playing Wisconsin. Nah, this game's not, not at South Bend. This game is, is not at Madison, which both of those places are spectacular. This is in my favorite summer city of the country. Not summer now, it's fall. Spectacular fall city as well. Chicago, Illinois. This is going to be played in the historic Soldier Field. I cannot believe that I can't get a ticket to this game. This is this is the mistake of the year by me, by the way. I should have foreseen this, and I should have planned to be in Chicago this weekend. It's going to be an absolute perfect weekend there. Wisconsin opens up minus six. That blew my damn hair back, by the way. Did not – don't have a lot of it. See what I'm saying? But that that shocked me. I did not I did not see Wisconsin almost a touchdown favorite. I, I don't know that I agree with that number. Um might be a play for me this week. I'm, I'm curious to see what it looks like as, as the week goes on. I think the Irish finally got their stride a little bit. This defense figured out what they want to do. They pretty much shut down Purdue, beat Purdue 27-13. to 13. Um, Purdue couldn't get anything going offensively. I think Purdue is a substantially better offense than Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin's defense is far better than Purdue's defense. But I trust Brian Kelly. I've said this four weeks now. Three weeks now. This will be four. I trust Brian Kelly. I think this Irish team is getting better and better every week. I told you they were going to grind this game out. It was going to stay tight. But by the time they got to the fourth quarter, what was going to happen? They were going to start to pull away from Purdue. That's exactly what happened. You got the win. You got the cover. I like the Irish. I could not believe. I thought maybe they might be the dog. That didn't shock me. I couldn't believe it was almost a touchdown. Too many points. That shocks the shit out of me. I have to look into that later. Next biggest game. Another game going to a neutral site field. I think this is the next biggest game of the weekend. My opinion. You don't like it. Get your own TV show. Texas A&M Aggies are laying six points to my Arkansas Razorbacks, baby. Woo! 
this team is a lot of fun. Texas A&M might be finally feeling themselves. It's taken them a while. They've had a really slow start to the season. They've had a really disappointing start to the season. Arkansas, on the other hand, uh, started off real slow in week one and just, boy, set themselves on fire week two and then kind of carried it on over. They Both of these teams played also rans. Both these teams played, you know, vanilla teams. Arkansas beat up on Georgia Southern 45 to 10. A&M beats New Mexico 34 to nothing. But you can't learn anything from that other than both of these teams should have come from those games healthy, not having to really prepare a lot for those teams, and looking forward to going to the Jerry World and putting on a show. I'm excited for this game. I have no idea what I think. I think A&M is the better team. I think they are the more talented team. But would I lay six points to A&M against this Arkansas team right now? I don't I don't know that I'd do that. Really, really interested to see where this line moves and how it goes. Next game up I've got, we're going to hit one of these Thursday night special games. We've got two weeknight games that I love this week. Marshall at App State. App State is laying seven and a half points. Good Google Mooga, that's a lot of points against this Marshall team. I think Marshall's a pretty damn good football team, okay? Now, they got beat this weekend. They played East Carolina, and East Carolina is one of those teams that have been really bad for a while, but everybody believes they're well-coached, and I do think they're getting better. Now, they put on a show. It was a hell of a game. 38-42, East Carolina comes out on top. App State plays Elon. They beat the hell out of them, 44-10. to uh, I think this game's going to be a little different. I was shocked that this line was over a touchdown. That shocks me. I, I'll i be shocked if it stays over a touchdown. I think by kickoff we're going to be under a touchdown. I might be wrong. The whole world might, might disagree with me. It is a home team on one of these weeknight games, and we've seen what the crowd can do for the home team, but we don't have a home dog. That's where it gets a little different. Next game, Wake Forest doing the same thing, going on the road to Virginia. Man. Virginia and North Carolina put on a show. Now, I gave you Virginia and the points. Lost that game. Told you Virginia money line. Sprinkle a little bit on it because it's going to be fun. And we went into halftime against North Carolina. twenty. I think it was 24, 25 to 27. Had a lead. Two, three points. Whatever. And I thought, brother, I am in this thing. I got the lead at half. I need Bronco Mendenhall and the boys to just hang with them. And they were going tit for tat with Sam Howell. And I'll be damned. If North Carolina didn't come out and figure out a way they got to stop and they kept scoring and they got to stop and they kept scoring. And the next thing you know, it's 59. What is it? What, what, what was my final here? I got it written down somewhere. 59 to 39. Virginia just couldn't keep up. Now, this is the most points I've seen the Virginia team score since Broncos been there. Okay. They got a quarterback for the first time in a long time. Now, I think Wake Forest, hell of a football team. Told you this week, last week. That Wake Forest is one of those teams that has been at the bottom of the ACC for a while, and they're coming up to the top. Now, they're not Clemson level. They're not at the top yet. But I think they can give some teams fits. I think they're a lot more talented than people think. Virginia's minus four and a half. That number shocked me as well. I thought this game was going to be pretty damn close to a pick because I think in a neutral site field, I would take Wake Forest right now. Um, four and a half might be a little too high for me, but once again, Weeknight game at home. Virginia will be rocking. Should be a fun game. Moving on. Next big game we got. Listen, I get to make the rules. I get to pick the games. It's my game. My LSU Tigers are going to Starkville. Got to listen to those cowbells ring all night, guys. Starkville, Mississippi is going to be Pissed off. You talk about a team that's got the red ass right now for what happened at Memphis and some of the calls that went against them. I can't believe Mike Leach is not in prison right now down on 201 Poplar. It could have called me. I'd have bailed him out. Um, it was criminal what happened. Criminal what happened to Mississippi State. Mississippi State's going to be fired up. They're going to be ready. And this offense is the kind of offense that has given LSU's defense fits. Now, LSU – Got on track finally for the first time in a couple of years. They kicked the hell out of somebody. Central Michigan comes in 49 21. It wasn't that close to get a couple of garbage time touchdowns. They had one blown touchdown, uh, a, a busted coverage for a touchdown. They really only gave up one drive for a score the entire night. Defense looked good. Offense finally got going. 
Mississippi State's going to be better than Central Michigan. Mississippi State's going to be fired up, okay? They, they're going to be out for blood. Mike Leach and Mississippi State Bulldogs have kind of had LSU's number for a little bit. I'm nervous about this game. I'm anxious about this game. My LSU Tigers open up a, f- a favorite on the road, minus three and a half. I think that's probably right, but I think that's right because of they're making a line based on better's perception, okay? They, they're they trying to get people to bet state, and so they have to make the number a little bit bigger than what I think it should. I think your value right now is on state, but you'll never hear me pick against my Tigers, guys. It just ain't going to happen. So I'm just going to be honest with you about my bias. I'm going to tell you what I think, and then I'm going to pick my Tigers. That's just how this game is going to be played. Moving on. Surprise team of the year for me. In the Big 12, it, there's two, actually. There's two teams that I thought were just going to be putrid. I just thought they were going to be real bad because they've been bad for a while. Ah, a couple of years, I guess. Texas Tech Raiders. Now, the other team is Kansas State. Two teams I was wrong. Texas Tech Raiders are going to um, Austin, play University of Texas. Now, the University of Texas did something I think is real smart this week. They kicked the shit out of Rice. But it's not just beating up on a team you're supposed to beat up. They realized they were – I I think Card was playing well for them as quarterback. They made a change. They made a change. Now, I don't know if this is a change just because they were playing Rice or if this is, you know, they beat them out. Casey Thompson is who they went to. I don't know if Casey Thompson beat Card out in practice, if, if they've just seen enough of Card and they want to see what they can get from him. But I'm going to tell you that this Texas Tech team is not a team that they should be sleeping on. It's definitely not a team that you can just start trying stuff and hope that you can stay in front of them um, like you did with Rice. Texas Tech just completely stomped Florida International 54-21. This Raiders team has got an offense. They figured out a way to score. Their defense much improved. Matt Wells has the boys rolling. I'm really, really excited to watch this football game. Texas, told you, beat the hell out of Rice, 58 nothing. This is a game that you're going to want to keep your eye on. Line Texas at home laying 10 and a half points. It's a big number. That's a big number against a team that I think. This is what I would have thought the number would have been last year, okay, when Texas Tech was bad. All right, you're going to be a double-digit favorite. I don't know that they should be a double-digit favorite right now. I, I think this Texas Tech team's got a lot more fight in them than, than what I originally gave them credit for before the season started. Next game up, a team that ha- has to be the most disappointing team in all of college football right now. They just, they just have to be. Uh, and it's not because they have a bunch of losses. It's for how pathetic they look considering what everyone expected of them. All right? So, like, Florida State, is a bad team. And it's easy to say, oh, well, they're the most disappointing team. Yeah, but there's a lot of people that didn't have any expectations of Florida State at all. Okay. Everybody on the planet, your boy included, had Clemson being in the playoffs and moonwalking their way through the ACC. This just ain't so. They struggled with all that they had to score against Georgia Tech. I do not believe Georgia Tech is a very good football team. Now, I might be wrong about that, okay? But I don't think Georgia Tech is a very good team. And they are struggling to put points on the board against everybody they play. This weekend, they're going on the road to a team that I still think is pretty good. I know they lost to Mississippi State two weeks ago. I still think they're really good. I still think they got a shot to be one of the top two or three teams in the ACC in North Carolina State. North Carolina State – Played Fordham, uh, Furman. Sorry, you're not going to to learn anything from there. But once again, this is one of those we didn't really have to prepare for Furman. We can just get out of this game healthy. We can work on stuff, and we can just everything we're doing in game planning for this game is really has our eyes set on Clemson. Okay, they beat them 45-7. No big deal. Clemson in an absolute dog fight for their life against Georgia Tech, 14 to eight. I think Clemson's struggling to put the ball in the end zone. Clemson is a 10-point favorite on the road right now. I didn't know what this number was going to be, but I'll tell you this. 
it will be the greatest amount of self-control I've ever had for me to not bet against Clemson this weekend, no matter what the number was. Okay, if this number came out six, if the number came out three, there's a, there's a world where I probably would have just just taken the points, taken my chances with the Red Wolves, and b- moved on. Um, I, I I just think this Clemson team is something's not right offensively. I don't know the answer to it. I don't think it's uh, DJ Uyunglele. I think he's a good quarterback. I I can't tell you what it is. I'm not there. I'm not. I'm not an integral part of the team. They're just. They're just not that good right now on offense. Defensively, they're still they're still a hell of a football team, guys. Brett Venables is still one of the best coaches on the planet. He's he's better at what he does than everybody else in the world is at what they do. Almost okay. Really, really good. I think points are going to come at a premium. I'm really curious to see what this under is. Do the books have the balls to make an under in the 30s? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And then the last game is the fight for Texas. The fight, really, for Dallas. Okay? You got Texas Tech. You got Texas. See, that's that's a Texas on Texas crime here. We're going to have SMU against TCU. This is a little bit of different Texas crime, okay? One's an American team. One's a Big 12 team. So one's supposed to be better than the other. Sonny Dykes, Gary Patterson, two guys I love. These two guys are going to put points on the board. This game is not going to look like the Texas game, okay? It's just not. I think they're going to score. I think they're going to score a lot. I think this game is going to be a lot of fun. TCU is laying 10. 10. Thought that was a little much. I like Sonny Dykes. I Sonny Dykes was in a fight to, to, to win and to beat Louisiana Tech this weekend. 39, 37, 30. Yeah, that's what I wrote down. TCU had a bye week. They had two weeks to prepare. Sometimes in college football, guys come off bye weeks and they're well prepared and they're rested and they're fresh. And a lot of times in college football, that bye week don't really help you as much as you think it does because these are 18, 19, 20 year old kids that you just gave a week off to. Okay. And they are some of the biggest stars in town and they tend to not rest and not prepare for two weeks in a row. And they tend to have a good time. And Dallas is a spectacular place to go have a week off and have a good time. I'm very curious to see what a Gary Patterson football team looks like against Sonny Dykes because this might be a little shot at Oklahoma here. This might be the best offense TCU plays all year. Okay. And I'm I'm very curious to see how they match up, how this goes. Can Gary Patterson, a defensive lord, who hasn't always had a great defense, but he's at TCU. You can't recruit that kind of talent there. What can he do against the Sonny Dykes defense to slow them down? Points, I think TCU can score whenever the hell they want. I don't think SMU's defense is very good. I don't see TCU punting a lot. Maybe 10 points isn't enough. Um, I'm very curious to see what the public does, where the tickets go, what the percentage of money goes to, what do other people think. I love these two coaches, and I, I can't wait to watch this battle for Dallas. Guys, that is the Opening line show for week number four. We're four weeks in, five weeks if you count week zero. It's been fun so far. I'll be back Wednesday, okay? If I didn't get to a game and something you want to talk about, put it in the comments. I check the comments every couple of days. I'll talk back. I'll respond. If you ask a question, I'm going to respond so you don't have to ask it six, seven, eight times later. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you so much. It means the world. Come back Wednesday. See me then. Let's talk. We'll pick some games. I'm going to be better. Hell, I can't get a lot worse. I went one and four against my picks this week, guys. I don't know what the hell is going on. Anyway, we'll be back next week. It's going to be a good time. Be back Wednesday. Then we'll be back Saturday. I appreciate you. For SportsbookReview.com, my name is Christopher Giannini, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>